This could be a make or break meeting for them. No doubt he's going to go there and see if he can uh, talk them into keeping him as leader. We've got a little poll which um, may give some guidance, Anita. Yeah, well, let, let me tell you uh, what we have here, Andrew. What we did was we asked if Labour could win the next election under a different leader. And this is what we found. 32% agreed with that statement. That's compared to 63% who disagreed. We then went on to ask if they felt Gordon Brown had lost authority and should resign immediately. And this is what uh, we were told. 52% said, yes, we agree with that. He should go right now. 43% disagreed. 62% want the government to call an election at the earliest possible opportunity. 36% uh, disagreed with that statement. Um, what about David Cameron? Well, half think that David Cameron has what it takes to be a good prime minister. And then 41% disagreed with that statement. So those are the figures, Andrew. Indeed they are. Thanks very much for that, uh, Anita. Now, we've got two Labour backbenchers to talk about this. Roy Hatchley's still here, of course, but we're joined by Kevin Barron. He's the chairman of the Health Sex Select Committee and former minister Mark Fisher, also Labour MP. Welcome to both of you. Uh, Kevin Barron, given the enormity of the defeat that came out last night, how is Gordon Brown still the best person to lead you into the next election? Well, I mean, what we have to look at a little bit is history. You know, we're in the fourth year of a third term Labour government. You look what was happening to the Tories when they, they were in this situation. Mm -hmm. Look at 1994. Lost 400 council seats, sure. different councils. And lost by a landslide lost, in the election. Lost, well, they did indeed. You know, and mm. they were riven. So where's the well, analogy? Well, well <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you where the analogy is. It's in part sitting in this room. The, the lessons that we have to learn from all this is that fighting and rowing with one another seem to be a party that's divided. But People will not vote for. I joined the Labour Party in 1974. The next decade was a Labour government in for a while and it split divisions. There was a civil war inside the party that gave us 18 years of opposition. And my view is this has to stop tonight. But that's what parties do when you get into this state of, of your lives. I mean, I saw it with the... Labour government in the late 70s, which Roy was a part of it. I then saw it again with the major government. Though, by the way, even the major government didn't get his results as bad as this in the elections. And now you see it, you know, the number of ministers, Tory ministers we used to have in our studio saying, we've got to stop this infighting or we'll lose. They couldn't help themselves, they lost. It didn't, and they lost, and they lost massively. So what's going and to that, change that here? should be a lesson to all okay. parliamentary, all members okay. of the Parliamentary Labour Party. Uh, the Patless revolt failed. Mr. Brown saw that off by conceding a different cabinet reshuffle than the one he wanted. Um, why do you think the, the peasants' revolt is going to work? <laughs> I don't think there is a revolt. I mean, the interesting thing about the situation is that there is no ill feeling towards Gordon in the Parliamentary Labour Party, and you'll find that this evening. Uh, there's no doubt. So they'll stick with him? Well, I mean, they sh he should stand down, and that's a very different thing. There's no doubt, from his point of view, he is the most experienced, the best, the most substantial leader so we've got. He stand down? But he, well, he's lost the confidence of the British people, and that is only too apparent from last Thursday. Thursday and tomorrow, and I suspect he's lost confidence in himself. Well, it's just apparent from your poll. I mean, I was surprised how near he was to on the poll. Perhaps I shouldn't be conceding that, <laughs> but he was within single figures and small single figures uh, with Cameron in comparison when the British public were polled. I think Mark's got to understand, and I, Mark will forgive me saying, he's the only old Etonian in a peasant <laughs> revolt I've ever known. But uh, It's not a revolt, what, 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 what Mark's got to face it's not simply the question whether Gordon is the best man. I've no doubt that he is. No doubt at all he's the best man. But he also has to face the consequences of what happens if there is a successful revolt or Gordon does stand down. The mayhem of the next two months and then a general election. Because I repeat, I said earlier, a general election will be irresistible if a new prime minister who has not gone to the country is appointed by the Parliamentary Labour Party. No, I really don't agree. I think that, uh, that it's perfectly possible to say to the British people it would be madness to have a general election in this atmosphere at the moment, because it wouldn't be a, ref a general election, it would be a referendum on MPs' expenses, and that's in nobody's interest. So that, and I think if somebody calmly says that to the British people and says, we're not going to have, I'm, uh, I'm a new leader of, the, of, of this government, I'm, I, I'm not going to be here for very many months, but we cannot have an election now. Well, and have it's you been one reading of, the newspapers for that week? Do you think the newspapers are willing to accept this calm advice well, from calm members of Parliament about it? <laughs> I mean, there will be a huge outcry. You've got for to make that case. Well, I mean, yes, the real issue 
got to see it off because the case for a general election, it wouldn't be in anybody's interest to have a general election. But that could really damage you in the longer term when you eventually have an election. Well, the real issue is, in my view, if we went, first of all, I think, and I generally think this, not to scare anybody on our back benches, but if there was to be a change of leadership in the Labour Party now, I think there should be a general election. I say that as a Democrat. So mm. who's been elected for 26 years in Westminster. So you lead a new election. Well, I, I, I think so, yes. I, I, I say that as an individual. I don't mean it to scare anybody. But the real issue around this, and what happened last Thursday as well, is this expenses issue. We cannot have a general election on the basis of the... Precisely. Uh, ..about what has been happening with MPs' expenses. Okay. We've got to get to the other side of that. I want to know... And my constituents will want to know who's offering what on education, who's offering what on health, who's what sure, yeah. on employment and the state of the economy at the next election. Th those are issues that, that we have got to get to. And I have to say, at this stage, I hear very little from what the opposition are saying in relation to these matters. And they've got to come out. We've got to get them out of their court and say, what would you do for education and health sure, but in I've this country? Sure, but I've been hearing this in the studio for months and months Absolutely. now. And it just gets worse for you. Uh, what a senior Tory said to me this morning... Uh, this is the best of all possible worlds. The government's got a lame duck leader and it's a lame duck government and Brown stays. It doesn't get better than this. Well, I think the senior Tory, whomever he may be, was wrong. And the best scenario, and I think this is likely now, I think this will be cathartic. I think if the rebels, I'm sorry to keep calling them rebels because I know in a sense they're not, if they accept that tonight fails, that uh, Gordon is Prime Minister on Wednesday morning, then they can't go on doing this. If he gets a clear restart, if he accepts some of the mistakes that have been made by the government, I think we can have a year of improvement. You see, It may not be a personal scenario, but it's the best that's going. Using the major analogy, the major years, which I, I remember very well, because it was a government, it was a slow-motion car crash. It was, absolutely. Uh, and, and they just couldn't help themselves. No matter how often they said, we've got to be united, we've got to stop squabbling among ourselves, using words that you and Roy have used again today, they it had just gone too far and they couldn't help themselves. That's the danger for your party. Well, it is the danger. I have to say, I, I read a book, I don't normally read a book written by, <laughs> ex, well, Tory MPs, by Norman Fowler, Political Suicide. It's all in there. It is, isn't Members it? of the Labour Party want to know where we're at in, in, at this time. It's all in there. And if we want to carry on well, operating some backbenchers like the whipless wonders ended up, you know, one of them ended up leading the Conservative Party in opposition. Is, is it, we'll it, end up with 18, it, 18 years of, of, of opposition again. And it's, it is crazy. It's up to the Labour Party backbenchers. Mark has to be more sensible than Bill Cash. It's as simple as that. That's <laughs> not a very high hurdle. You're not raising a high well, hurdle there, Roy. Right? No, come on, come on, Mark. Let, I mean, yes, your absolutely. problem is, is, that, the, is that you haven't got a Michael Hezel time. No. You, you, you haven't got a real that's alternative. That's our problem, is it? <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good thing to have. You know, we no, haven't you 